Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. This is an experience that I still struggle with to this day. Oh shoot. I'm an 80s kid and I grew up in Georgia. My old man was a master sergeant in the Air Force and my mom was a nurse at the local hospital. And there were many times Shouts to the nurses out there, man. had to babysit my younger sister and me. Well, we love the nurses. Since I was a bit older than my little sister, I spent most of the time riding bicycles around the neighborhood with my friends, climbing trees, and exploring the forest near our home. Usual kid stuff. On occasion, when we had a bit of money, me and my friends would ride to the grocery store to buy some candy and soda. On these occasions, we would leave our bikes in the alley between the bowling alley and the grocery store, next to the discarded shipping crates. On the day in question, me and my friends Jamie, Tommy, Danny, and Charles we were out riding our bikes like any other day. We rode through the forest trails and decided to go grab some drinks to combat the summer heat. We rode up to the store, stashed our bikes, and went inside and got our drinks. We came back out and sat in the shipping crates, chatting and laughing while we stuffed our faces with candy and Dr. Pepper. A short time later, Danny and Jamie took off for home, while Charles, Tommy, and I stayed behind. We wanted to hang out a bit more before we left. Then, someone emerged from the side entrance. The man then came over to us and started talking. Hey guys, how's it going? Huh? He seemed okay. At first. Oh shoot! Until he pushed Tommy and me inside one of the is shipping somebody, crates and is, is there like a dark figure standing there? Or just, or just that? Or am I just tripping? Like in the middle right here? I might be just tripping. Though. This, look, this look like legs right here, but I don't know. I don't know. Door. I'm tripping. He then pinned the container against the opposite wall, trapping us. Whoa! He then shoved Charles to the ground. Whoa! Charles then jumped on his bike and left us behind. <laughs> Looks like your friend ditched you. Let me share a little secret with you too. I've been watching you for a while. Coming back here, sitting in these crates. You all are like little mice. I stared up at the man from inside the crate. His once friendly face now dawned an expression that can only be described as pure evil. Oh my gosh, he been what, bro? He been he been taking no, he been watching them, bro. And what you call it? Said maybe, yeah, it could be something there. I might I might even it look like it. But this guy's been scouting these boys. That is that is weird. That's a weird thing, guys. Pure evil, they say. They say pure evil. The man then looked me dead in the eyes. I know who you are, where you live, who your parents are. Oh, that's crazy. The man what? then looked at his shirt, revealing a pistol. Oh, Lord! If you boys behave yourselves, I won't have to use this. this Hold on! What you... If you're not gonna pop us, what you trying to do? Hey man, hey, whoa, hey, just, hey, hey, just pop us, bro. Just like, if this guy not trying to pop them, what is he trying to do? Talking about just behave, behave how? Oh, this this, this dude better not try to violate, bro. This is crazy. Next part is quite upsetting for me to relay. The man opened the crate and pulled out Tommy, and he. I think you can probably guess what he did to Tom. Oh my gosh, bro. I watched on. This hopeless, is crazy, bro. Still trapped inside the shipping crate. The man threw Tom to the ground. No, and Then bro. turned to look at me. That's crazy. The man was very big, muscular, and covered in biker tattoos. Oh, that's There was weird, absolutely bro. nothing we could do to fight him off. I couldn't fight him off. When he was done with me, he stood up and said... Remember, boys, I know where you live. You tell anyone about this, I'll know where to find you. He then began laughing. 
<laughs> as he disappeared down the alley. We collected ourselves and took off for home. Being the clueless nine-year-olds we were, we believed the man's threats and about him knowing where we lived, so we didn't tell our parents. Charles did, though. His mom called the police, and the next day we found out that the man had been arrested for assault from when he pushed Charles down. It turns out that the man was an employee at the store. The police never spoke to us, though. That monster only spent 45 days in jail and was released back out into our neighborhood. That's crazy. Six months after his release, Charles was riding up to the store by himself. The man had been fired, and Charles was completely unaware of what happened to Tommy and me. Lord, bro. Someone shot Charles in the back of the head while he was heading back to his house. Oh, Lord. This had never happened in our town before. The entire community was shaken. And this time, the police spoke to everyone. When they questioned me, I broke down. I was terrified. I told them about what happened to Tommy and me behind the grocery store. <clears throat> I told them about the threats. Unfortunately, by the time I spilled the beans to the police, it was too late. The man had skipped town. Man. And the last time anyone saw him was the night that Charles was killed. I will end things on a bittersweet note. That's crazy. No arrest was ever made because the man took his own life two years later. Man, that's sad, bro. That's a sad story. I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> this happened when I was about seven. My sister was nine at the time. It was a very different world back in the 80s. My sister and I were allowed to walk to the park alone as long as we stayed together. We did this all the time and never had an issue until that day. There was a playground that sat adjacent to the baseball field. Beyond the baseball diamond, you could see the forest that bordered our neighborhood. The only landmark being a massive boulder outside the tree line. We were the only ones in the park that day, playing on the monkey bars. I remember seeing a figure standing at the edge of the woods as it moved toward the boulder. As I focused my vision, I could see that it was a man with no shirt on. Oh my god. He looked bro. like he was out of shape, and he had long, messy hair that fell to his shoulders. God, going it, bro. I honestly couldn't tell if he was wearing any pants or not. Oh my god. When gosh. he noticed me looking at him, he beckoned for me to come over. Heck my no! My sister immediately said, Don't you dare go over there. Stop. Stay away from him. I might have been just a kid back then, but my dad always taught us about stranger danger. We ran oh all the my. way back home. Okay, good. And told our dad what happened. What? He called the police right away. First of all, hold on, bro. Why? Are, is, if this is at night, this is a total stupid idea. Like, who, like what parents want to let their would let their kids go out to a to a playground at night, even if it's in the day? Like, we gotta be like, this is a this is a cold world we live out here, man. We gotta be ten toes at all times, bro. My kids are not going to be out alone nowhere. You know what I mean? Man, this is just crazy. Let's, let's hear what happens. Good thing they ran. I'm happy that they ran instead of try, trying to figure out or like trying to communicate. I'm glad they got out the spot. Let's see what happens. A police officer showed up a short time later. After we told our story, the officer turned to my dad and said, You know kids, they sometimes make stories up. Oh my gosh. I was absolutely Not the movie line. But the officer did not believe us. What? After he left, Dad said, Don't worry. I believe you. From that day on, he would walk us to the park himself. Thankfully, we never saw that man again. However, two kids from a nearby neighborhood did go missing around the same time. Oh lord. And when the news broke... I saw a sketch that was made of a suspicious man wearing no shirt who was seen in the area where the kids were shortly before they went missing. It was the same guy. Oh my gosh. I honestly don't know what became of the missing kids. My parents shielded us from stuff like that, especially after what happened at the park. 
Who knows what could have happened to me and my sister if that man managed to snatch us up. Yeah, I would have been on a news record, bro. Story, I just want to say that I'm not someone who hates cops. But that day, they got it wrong. Typical movie line is like... Zach's musician sensation salad. It's like the movie line where it's like, oh yeah, no, you, you, you're just freaking out. You're just paranoid. You know, it's, it's not really a demon, you know, that, that's haunting this house. Yeah, just go to sleep. And then you, and then the guy that's said go to sleep, he ended up getting chopped up. And now you're looking at him chopped up. Like, I, mean, I told you, stupid. But he, now he's dead. That's how the cop was acting. The cop was acting like, ah, what guy? And now he got a case where, where a guy did what almost happened to them. Let's continue. This happened when I was 14. Gabe. I was home alone one weekend while my parents were at a work convention out of state. Hey, hey. I hope y'all taking notes here, man. The home alones and the XYZs going places by his, like, we got to, we got to tighten up with that. Like the home alones, uh, yay. But I'm, a, I'm, you, you might be a teenager be like, man, I'm, I'm grown enough to stay home alone. Cool. That's cool. But it's always good to be with somebody. Even as a grown adult, you know what I mean? It's always good to be with somebody because if stuff like that happens, somebody has your back. That's all it, that, that's all it's about, pretty much. I was in my bedroom playing Rocket League with two of my friends. To clarify, they weren't in the room with me. I was talking to them on my headset. During the game, I heard a thump from downstairs. Oh, shoot. This wasn't unusual because I have two cats who wrestle each other sometimes, and they often make a lot of noise while they're doing it. So I assumed that's what it was and resumed my game. But I slightly turned on the volume to hear if the noise persisted. Two minutes later, I hear another thump. Followed by what sounded like a grunt. Hang on, guys. I think I hear something downstairs. Go check it out. We'll be here when you get back. I began to make my way downstairs, thinking that my cats were wrestling rougher than they usually do. But as I got about halfway, I froze. I could hear what sounded like men whispering to each other, coming from the living room. I crouched down to get a small peek into the living room and saw three men dressed in black. I felt my chest sink in when I saw them. Oh, free. I slowly went back upstairs. Oh, free. And of course, like in a typical horror film, the very last step made a loud creak. Oh my gosh! Ah! The I entire house went silent. I knew that they heard it. Thinking on my feet, I quietly went to my room and threw on my headset. Guys... I need you to call 911. There are three men inside my house. What? Bro, hey. Look, I don't. Hey, listen. No questions. Call the police now, bro. <laughs> Ain't no time to. How did they look? What they were. Bro, call the police right now. They are here. Guys, please. I saw three guys downstairs. Okay? Freaking stairs made a creak. They know I'm inside. Please, please, guys, please. I, I, I'm serious. I can't talk loud. I gotta whisper. Freak, man. Hurry up! Don't not, not shut up. Call the police, bro. Call the police, bro. Ain't no time to ask questions, bro. In this situation, is no time to ask questions. We gotta call the police now. Please, guys, help me. If you want to, if you want to play games with me tomorrow, <laughs> call the police for me, man. Goodness gracious, the questions is outrageous, man. It's, this is this is just like a movie scene. You <laughs> now, now y'all want to ask questions? Ah, <sighs> well, let's continue, man. Ah, <sighs> man, I'm, I'm 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 nervous for this guy. I'm nervous for him. I don't have time to explain. Just call the cops and send them to my house right now. I'm being 100% serious. I then threw my headset on the bed. Bro, and this will be the, the the most stupidest or the worst time for that one friend that always want to play games. He think you're playing, oh, let them just get you. 
cold. I'm being serious. Like, it's like no matter how how much you're serious, the, that one friend that think you playing or that play games too much is gonna not be serious. I that, that if I see that friend, I'm decking him in the nose. I gotta get me one because I almost died, man. I could hear footsteps coming up the stairs. Lord. Oh, freak. I had to think fast. I knew that if I locked myself inside my room, they're gonna know. I would know where I was. Mm -hmm. So I closed the door and snuck over to my parents' room, leaving the door open so they wouldn't think to check it. I know the logic is flawed, but I had to think fast. Five seconds later, I heard a pair of heavy boots hit the wooden floor, accompanied by two more sets. I then heard them get louder as they came down the hall and stopped outside my bedroom. I heard pounding on my bedroom door, followed by a deep voice saying, Open up, kid, before I kick this door down. I lost my nerve and made a rash decision. I made a break from my parents' bedroom window and slid it open. I must have made a lot of noise while I was doing it because I heard the footsteps coming towards my parents' bedroom now. I looked over my shoulder and saw a dark figure appear in the doorway. Oh! Oh my God! The man yelled as he ran towards me. At this point, I tried jumping out of the window, but the man grabbed one of my ankles. Ha! Luckily, I was able to move my feet and slip out of my shoe, and I fell onto the small roof above my back porch. The man at the window jumped after me. I remember seeing a pair of boots coming right at me. I swear the man's feet would have gone right through me if I hadn't rolled off the roof at the last second. I landed awkwardly on my left ankle, but otherwise, I was okay. During all the commotion, one of the men ran downstairs to cut me off. Limping on one foot, I made it to the backyard gate before the man grabbed me and threw me to the ground. I tried to yell, but the man covered my mouth with his hand Lord. as the two other men climbed down from the window. Goodness gracious. The three of them began pulling me back into the house. But before they could get me through the door, I heard the sound of police sirens closing in. The men all looked at each other. Shit! They dropped me and ran towards the back Stupid. gate. I limped my way to the front door and yanked it open and yelled at the police officers. Hey, they're in the backyard. Three of the officers ran towards the backyard, while another helped me to one of the police cars. They managed to catch one of the assailants, while the other two made it over the fence. They threw the man into one of the cruisers, as I was giving my statement. Soon, the two friends I was playing online with pulled into the driveway on their bikes. Oh, snap! Okay. Oh, they... Oh, they was ready! <laughs> they were ready. Hey, clap emojis in the chat, man. Clap emojis in the chat. What? Shouts out to the cops and shouts out to the friend. But let's finish the story. Let's finish the story. It's, it's getting good. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. Thanks what? for calling the cops for me. What? The man that was caught was charged with burglary and attempted kidnapping. It turns out that the men broke through the basement window. I'm thankful that I managed to escape with only a sprained ankle. My lesson to everyone listening is to always follow your gut and never ignore any sounds you hear while you're home alone. Bro. That... Look. Look, guys. <clears throat> that is scary. His, his friends rolled up. Both on bikes. I mean, I mean, what were they going to do exactly? I don't know. But they still rolled up, man. They said, hey, where you at? Gabe, where you at? They came to his rescue. They they, they were down. They called the cops. Perfect. It's, this was just like a movie, man. This was just like a movie. He, he heard a sound. He saw the guys. He made a creak on the stairs. Then he was hiding in the room, left the door open, tried to get out the window, slipped, hurt his ankle. Ran, but they still got him. And then at the last second when he was about to be taken, then the cops came. That's that's a that's a crazy. That sounds like a movie. What if this is from a movie, man? 
But the way that it happened, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. I'm not gonna lie. And but but the fr- but the most exciting part though, after the cops came, is that his friends pulled up as well on the bikes. They were ready. They said, "Now nah, we gotta go help our friend." Cause cause some that that's how you know they were cool with them too, and that's how you know they're real friends. Cause some other guys playing online with games, they ain't pulling up. 